If you're a computational scientist, you probably have boatloads of your own data that you're excited to visualize. But what if you want to contextualize your data with a different simulation? Or if you're not a scientist, how can you find good data and how do you know if you're allowed to use it? There are many data sets online that are free and easy to find. Government agencies like NASA, the European Space Agency, and others provide various types of free data for public use and their credible sources of information. Many cities like Chicago, London, and Singapore provide data through open data portals that relates to local civic concerns. Certain university groups and individual researchers freely provide their data as well, and you may be able to find this data that's written about in academic papers. Even if that data isn't publicly available, you might be able to reach out to the scientists directly to request a copy. But more and more, research journals are demanding that researchers make their data available as a primary research output. If you use somebody else's data for your visualization, you need to have the proper permissions for using their data. And these permissions might differ depending on whether you're visualizing the data for profit, for private use, or for research and education. It's very important to credit the computational scientists, collaborators, and funding agencies, so make sure to get this information. And this isn't just about avoiding potential legal issues. Remember that a scientist's research data is their career, and it may be their entire life's work. We need to be respectful of that, and we need to ensure that the scientists always retain the rights to their own data. When looking for a data set, you need to assess the feasibility of visualizing it because some data sets are easier to visualize than others. If you're looking for a data set of a tornado, you can find that represented in many different ways, and you'll have to decide which is best and easiest for you to work with. A tornado data set that you find can be represented as a 2D image, a volume in a uniform, nested, or stretched format, surface geometry describing the shell represented as a mesh in a format like OBJ, particles, or many other different formats. The data can be very high resolution and multiple terabytes, way too big for your computer to handle. Or it can be very small, and it would look too blurry or blocky if you were to visualize it. The data might evolve over time and have many time steps. Or it might just have a few that you'll have to step through. Or it might just be one single snapshot in time. Some data types are easier to visualize than others depending on what tools you're using. Software packages may only understand one or a handful of different data formats, so you need to make sure to choose the right data for the tool that you're most comfortable using, or learn how to use the right tool for the data that you find. This visualization is made using a stretched grid data format. The outer edges of this grid, where not much of interest is going on, have less resolution than the tornado at the center. This data format is much more computationally efficient than using a uniform volume but not all software understands complex data formats like these. For example, the software Vapor understands stretched grids, but Blender doesn't. If you're looking for free, credible data sources, government agencies, universities, research groups, and academic papers are a good place to start. Make sure to give credit to the source of your data, and make sure that the data is in a format that you are capable of working with. Fun fact, there is a lot of data being collected and created out there in the world. And less than 0.5% of all data that is generated is ever analyzed and used. So get out there and find a cool data set that nobody has ever visualized before.